Pterosaurs are the biggest animals to ever fly, with the Ashtarkids being the biggest of the bunch. Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsogopteryx are the two biggest and most popular giant Ashtarkids that once ruled the skies of the Cretaceous. However, aside from Arambulgiania, there is another pterosaur that sits in the same weight class as Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsogopteryx, but this pterosaur is called the Cold Dragon. Cryodracon Boreas, the cold dragon or sometimes also called the ice cold dragon, is a carnivorous Quetzalcoatline Ashtachid pterosaur, meaning it is more closely related with Quetzalcoatlus and the other megapterosaurs than with the family's type member Ashdarko. Cryodracon was first described in 2019 by Michael Habib, David William Elliot Hone and Francois Terrien, its generic name being derived from the Greek words cryos or icy cold and dracon for dragon. The species epithet Boreas means belonging to Boreas, the north wind. Michael Habib had previously considered the name Cryodracon Viserion as a reference to the ice dragon in Game of Thrones. Damn, we were actually close to a mega pterosaur being named after a real dragon. As previously mentioned, Cryodracon belongs to a group called Quetzalcoatlinae. The body sizes inside of this group vary greatly as there are members such as Phosphatodraco with about 3.5 meters or 11.5 feet in wingspan and 10 kilograms or 22 pounds in weight, while on the other side there are the Megapterosaurs Thanatos Dracon, which means the dragon of death by the way, Hatsegopteryx Aramborgiania and Quetzalcoatlus with ginormous wingspans of 9 meters or 30 feet up to and over 12 meters or 40 feet and weights up to and over 150 kilograms, seen in Hatsegopteryx in particular, the biggest specimen probably being Dracula. Considering the fact that big Ashtachids actually have quite a few members and are known for their long distance flight abilities, they must have actually been incredibly widespread, from Hatsegopteryx in Romania, Aramburgiania in Jordan, Quetzalcoatlus in the US and multiple other genuses having been found in Laurasia and Gondwana. But where does the cold dragon lie on the size spectrum? Well previous size estimates put it at 5 meters or 16.4 feet in wingspan. However shockingly newer size estimates put the cold dragon Cryodracon as not only one of the bigger Ashtachids but it may really be as big or bigger than Quetzalcoatlus Nothropi, as one neck vertebrae does indicate about the same size similar to the Quetzalcoatlus Nothropi holotype. This translates to a wingspan of 10 meters or about 33 feet or more for Cryodracon. However, the cold dragon had slightly more robust bones than other long-necked Ashtachids shown in a partial skeleton of Cryodracon. The skeleton was found to have been scavenged by a dromaeosaurid, possibly Sauronitolestis langstoni with a broken tooth found in one of the bones, meaning this thin-walled bone must have been quote-unquote very tough, according to the authors. It can't be said for certain, but bone density could really be the X factor for Cryodracon being heavier and thus bigger than even Quetzalcoatlus, meaning Cryodracon would have reached a weight of 100 kilograms or 220 pounds plus. But how did these pterosaurs fly? Well, on the flying ability of pterosaurs, there is a quote from Kevin Padian, professor at the University of California in Berkeley. Pterosaurs have huge sternums where the flight muscles attach so there is no doubt that they were excellent flyers. We know from Quetzalcoatlus that it could very well take off from the ground and quickly gain altitude. On the ground it moved on all fours and was obviously way slower than in the air. This also goes for the Cryodracon, hunting similarly to modern day marabou storks. Their necks would probably snap in half if any Ashtachid tried to fish in active flight, as Mark Witten suggested in Prehistoric Planet. We now know where the cold dragon hunted, but before we can look at what Cryodracon would have had on its meal plan, we'll have to look for what animals actually lived alongside Cryodracon. Well, Cryodracon's holotype specifically is known from 76.7 million years ago to 74 million years ago, Dinosaur Park Formation, Alberta, Canada. The Dinosaur Park Formation includes invertebrates, fish, mammals, reptiles such as lizards, teenage mutant, uh, I mean just regular ass turtles and the crocodilians, Alberto Champsa and Lydiosuchus alongside another unnamed Texan, Choristodorus such as Champsosaurus and the Cteniogenes, Ashtarchid pterosaurs such as Cryodracon, alongside another unidentified non-Ashtarchid pterosaur, and Plesiosaurus such as Fluvionectus 
and an indeterminate short-necked polycotylid plesiosaur, as well as many dinosaurs such as the Ankylosaur Edmontonia, the Ceratopsian Centrosaurus, Cosmosaurus, Pentaceratops and Styracosaurus, the Ornithopods Corythosaurus, Lambeosaurus and Parasaurolophus, the Pachycephalosaurian Stegoceras, the Ornithomimid Ornithomimus, the Canagnatid Citipes, the Raptor Dromaeosaurus, the Trodontids Latinivinatrix, Pectinodon and Stenonychosaurus, as well as the Tyrannosaurids, Dasplethosaurus, Gorgosaurus and many many more. Cryodracon may have had to look out for crocodilians such as Ladiosuchus, especially on the riverside, and big theropods such as Dasplethosaurus, Wilsoni and Gorgosaurus Libratus on land, but aside from that, it would have definitely been the most intimidating predator around. Cryodracon stands about as tall as a giraffe, meaning most smaller dinosaurs, including dromaeosaurs and trodontids, as well as many ornithopods would have had to be scared of Cryodracon, as the beak of a giant ashtarchid can easily kill a small dinosaur that has no armor. While Cryodracon was no match for the big theropods, small ornithopods such as baby Parasaurolophus, Lambiosaurus or Corythosaurus, as well as baby Tyrannosaurus, and even fully grown trodontids and dromaeosaurs could have been on the menu. And who knows, maybe they did also hunt some mammals or some other reptiles such as baby turtles. Anything is possible really with the cold dragon, you've seen what Quetzalcoatlus did in prehistoric planet, while not even having a terrifying name. That's it for this video, smash the thumbs up, the bell and the subscribe, as only legends do that and I know you all are. I am also currently looking for an editor. If you want to join, just send an email to official.megaraptor at gmail.com. Add a YouTube link of an unlisted video of a 40 to 60 second clip using one of my voiceovers or even your own voiceover with some pictures and videos of the dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals talked about in the voiceover. I would also recommend adding some movement to the video, such as zooms, transitions and so on. You can add some memes for bonus points. I'm different. I am the one that can see John Cena. For more Megaraptor, there is also the German channel. Also check out Instagram for fitness motivation and inspiration, as I'm on a mission to help more people get fit. Furthermore, you can also check out Twitter to hear my thoughts on all kinds of dinosaur stuff. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.